Alright, so we're going to talk about something you've probably had an issue with at one point or another, and that is your clutch. Now, you've seen lots of videos where um, your clutch cable is loose, and you've seen how to adjust it. That can happen, eh, not too often, but it depends on how much you ride it. Uh, what happens basically is, for example, you're riding your bicycle, you come to a, a red light, you gotta wait. You close in your clutch, and then you lock it, and you let go. And you're just waiting for the light. If your engine seems to be running good, and once you do that with the clutch and you lock it, you take your hand off, if the engine all of a sudden sounds like it has less power, or almost wants to stall before you start screwing with the uh, throttle here go ahead and come back to the to the uh, clutch handle and hold it all the way back if your engine immediately picks up sounds stronger again that is a sign that your cable is loose. If when you do the same thing um, with the clutch handle you lock it in place and you're at a stop you can pick up your bicycle with the bicycle seat or if you have a double kickstand like me your wheel is off the ground. But that means your wheel is going to be moving a little bit. It's not supposed to. That's another sign that your clutch cable is too loose. Now the second thing that happens is something that happens generally over time. I've had this bike for eight months and I've got about 2,800 miles on it. If you adjusted the cable often, too often, once every few weeks, once a week, once every few days, okay, something else is going on. Well, if you drive it as much as I do or if you drive it extremely rough, as in gun it with the throttle, you know, with the hand throttle, and then release the clutch, bam, let it go, and it kicks into gear because you don't really want to pedal, well, you're going to wear out some parts. And those parts, the main part that you tend to wear out is called the camshaft. Now here is where the cable is attached to this part, which is the crank arm. The crank arm is also attached to a piece that's inside that is called the piece inside is called the camshaft now the camshaft inside this piece here inside here this little tube twists and turns to accommodate the bucking bar okay now not with an F with a B a bucking bar now the bucking bar um, the bucking bar is also attached inside to the or to a ball bearing. Now the ball bearing and the bucking bar rub up against each other and they can wear out. Okay, so they can wear out. The bucking bar can be pulled out and hopefully let's see if you can see there is a sort of like a, a bowl type shaped there mine is a little worn out on the edges so I did order another one but as you can see it's that easy to take in and out okay now the camshaft is held in place not just by the crank arm but also by this little pin here okay you can take that pin in and out that pin comes out in, in and out okay and as you can see like this little opening here that's where the bucking bar goes in now the camshaft this is what the camshaft actually looks like let's see I hope we got a good view alright good we got a good view this is obviously the top this thread in the area here is where these this bolt or this nut goes in and this bottom part is what you see 
is what you see right here what you see in here now you can tell if you're looking at mine you can tell mine is pretty worn out okay let me see if I can get it it's pretty worn out okay and that is wear and tear look at that nice big old gap missing there okay that happens with time like I said I've got about 2800 miles on this thing in just eight months and so once you have that forget about it there that wheel no matter how much you tighten this this cable and and hold back on the clutch that wheel is gonna turn like like a water wheel it's just gonna just keep on going so it's not gonna do any good so you need to replace that the bucking bar the camshaft the um, um, uh, crank arm these are like less than four dollars each one so it's quite simple um, it is a little bit of work to um, take the camshaft out of the crank arm because once you take the bolt this this nut off you actually have to hit it with a hammer to get it out if you see these little like these lines here those are designed to literally wedge wedge in here and then the nut is also helping it stay in place because you want this this the camshaft and the crank arm to be strong and and not you know move independent of each other otherwise it's not going to do you any good when you but just take mine it's, be careful of one very important thing before you take the camshaft out of the crank arm make sure that you take make you mark it with a pencil or something a marker or you take a picture I don't care make a note of where the crank arm is in relation to the camshaft okay because you need to put them in the right place otherwise when you put all this thing back together um, the 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 cam uh, the uh, crank arm is going to be in the wrong position and you won't be able to use your cable and you gotta you know take it back out and then rearrange it put it back in so make, just make sure that when you before you take off the cam sh the camshaft from the crank arm you simply make a note of their position and it should take you more than 15 minutes to fix it it'll be quite easy quite quick I used it today 20 miles uh, for you know 40 minutes each way didn't have a single problem everything went well so easy to fix but uh, uh, and cheap to fix